Uh, so now let's move on to um, to AJ yep. uh, for time for time for you to speak about part two of our uh, the uh, of our uh, original best practices for proposals. Right, and I actually like to call them good practices. All right, let's let's go I ahead. Know you and don't do like this. best practices, right? Let's go ahead and do this because yep. they always get better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we have five pioneers left. Now, I'm not going to make this painful for you. So this is one of the two schools of thought. Now, this is the rhetoric approach. Now, Steve Shipley highly refined that structured writing approach for sales communication, and he codified many aspects that were not consistently used before then. Their approach to writing proposals starts with developing a planning document, what they call the storyboard, which is very different than the original concept of a storyboard developed by Walt Disney. Then identifying the key objectives and requirements of each section, then developing an annotated outline with carefully written headings and theme statements, and then developing mock-ups of each section, and finally drafting multiple iterations of text with figures using best practices. Now this writing approach itself is considered uh, what we would call a permissive writing approach that's somehow referred to as a river raft of words with occasional figures. Now, the Shipley approach built on high silver scenario and strategizing and planning and adopted scenario as a form of storyboarding. Hyman Silver ran proposals at North American Rockwell, and he was a, also a giant in the business. He came to prominence with their win of Space Shuttle and then Space Station Phase B, two huge jobs back then. They were massively complex proposals, and he later formed his own firm, HSA, which later morphed into Technology Training Corporation. Highest approach was called scenario and was the origin of what is referred to as storyboards in the Shipley process, incorporating both requirements, themes, and strategy at the section level. And it's used as a planning tool, so it really isn't a page-by-page mock-up or a frame-by-frame mock-up. And then Jim Beveridge. Now, we talked about him earlier. Many of the ideas he introduced in terms of thinking of proposals as sales documents became codified by Shipley in their Shipley Proposal Guide. Now, Ray Baker of Rensselaer wrote perhaps the most, the first comprehensive instruction book on writing. Now, there are many other books in, from the same era as well. Now, this is from the 30s to present day. There are numerous academic papers and books simply about technical communication, how, simply how to write better for business. Even to this day, this is a very vibrant area of academic research. Okay. It's time to get your toga on and rewind almost 3,100 years to the days of the Romans. Cicero. Some of you may not know who he is, but if you had a classics training in school, you will definitely know who Cicero was. He was considered as perhaps the finest Roman orator. He thought of three levels of speaking and writing, a low, middle, and high style depending on who your audience is. Low is to instruct, middle is to please, and high is to move. That is, emotionally move you. If you haven't read Tom Sant's book, you should. I love that he named one chapter, The Cicero Principle, How to Avoid Talking to Yourself in Print. <laughs> now, Tom points out that you're writing for your customer, so channel the customer as you write. Now, let's go back another 300 years to Aristotle. Now, this is really the origins of the rhetoric approach, 350 B.C., his treatise, Rhetoric, is considered the original source of how to persuade through communication. He describes three principal tenets, logic, credibility, and appeal. Now, the parallels to what we are trying to achieve in proposals are, are they're obvious. Now, besides the Shipley Guide, you should also add two other books to your bookshelf, Tom Sant's book and Patrick Henry Winston's book, Make It Clear. Patrick Winston is perhaps one of the most popular lecturers at MIT. Now, this book is an indispensable reminder of the principles of how to communicate for understanding, but also for intended outcome. Okay, let's have some fun. To know Cicero is to love Cicero. Now, quickly, what are the three ways you can write like Cicero? And believe me, it's something we should all strive for. First, anadiplosis. Fear, now listen to this, fear leads to hate, hate leads to anger, anger leads to suffering. Who said that? That was Yoda. <laughs> this trick can help you more effectively link successive ideas to make a point. Anadiplosis, I can't even say that word, 
It's a repetition of the last word of the previous clause, and it looks like what, what, exactly what Yoda said. Here's the second way you can write like Cicero, chiasmus. Now, this is about reversing a pattern. It helps you emphasize a contrast, like this. It's not the men in my life that count, it's the life of my men. Oh, who said that? That was Mae West. Or in more presidential terms, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. That was, of course, President John F. Kennedy. Now, the third way you can write like Cicero is called the tricolon. This is as, as simple as stating things in threes. It was one of the President Obama's techniques. If there is anyone out there who still doubts that America is a place where all things are possible, who still wonders if the dream of our founders is alive in our time, who still questions the power of our democracy, tonight is your answer. Those are very famous words from President Obama. All right, now let's move on to the second major school of thought and the foundation of our business, SMA. Now, we believe that successful proposals are designed, engineered, and built, just like how your firm's product is designed, engineered, and manufactured. No, or your service offering, if you're not manufacturing something, is designed, configured, and provisioned. No, I did not say how a successful proposal is written. What I said was how a successful proposal is designed, engineered, and built. Now, you should add these four books to your bookshelf. In fact, come, you know, they're, they're available on Amazon if you'd like to get a copy. Now, the SMA approach is based on systems thinking and agile principles. It was, its, or, uh, its origins was in the 70s, as I mentioned earlier, and that's an evolution of the approach that was originally developed by Tracy, Ruge, and Starkey, and all the way in 1962, known as Sequential Topical Organization of Publications. Now, that's a mouthful. Uh, say that again, Sequential Topical Organization of Publications. And that's also true, believe it or not, to the original concept of storyboarding developed by the Walt Disney Company. Now, there are three features that are considerably different than the traditional rhetoric approach, which we covered earlier. The first feature that's different is that the page itself is treated as a semantic object. What do we mean by that? What we mean that, by that is that we build the proposal page by page, not write a proposal. The second feature that is quite different than the rhetoric approach is that we do figures before we actually do any writing. And then the third is that the effort is guided by constructing a simple story of why us. It's done early in the process and then building the proposal as a medium through which we tell that story. You see the parallels to what Walt Disney did? I hope you do. Now this last point is different than embedding wind themes and discriminators throughout your proposal section. I just want to make that point out. And, and wind themes and discriminators comes later. Now Steve Myers incorporated these three aspects into a framework based on, believe it or not, the middle standard 499B, Systems Engineering Standard, that was developed way back then by DOD, and it's the standard against which we used as a model to create the SMA proposal process. In essence, we focused on the story <laughs> first, wherein the theme is the win strategy. We then break down the proposal into modules, where the module is thematically coherent, and then we assign page counts to each module. Each module is typically two to five pages. We then write a detailed product spec for each module. Remember, product spec for each module. This is part of the design process. We then develop the art as the key features of each module and as how we really weave the story throughout the proposal. We then undertake the painful process of planning each page out as how the story is told. We do iterative reviews and continue refinement of the page-by-page -page plan. This is a plan. We haven't done any writing yet. And so this is really becomes a page-by-page mock-up. And then last and then usually fairly late in our process is the job of writing, which at this point is actually much easier. Now, where did this come from? As I said, High Silver was a giant in the field and perhaps to this day somewhat, you know, really undervalued. What his team at Rockwell and the Space Shuttle and the Space Station Phase B wins was, it was really innovative in what they did. And it's a case book study of how to win large complex programs. Now, both Steve Myers and Steve Shipley really built on High's ideas. Hudson Patton and his graphics-oriented technique. It's usually just referred to as GO. Again, graphics-oriented technique. 
Now, Hudson was at TRW when he developed his thinking, and even when I was at TRW in the very early 80s, his approach was actually still very visible in the proposals we did. Now, Go introduced a single but very important idea, and one that is central to SMA's approach, namely that you do the graphics first to create the sequential logical argument of why us. The graphic had to essentially substantiate any assertion we were making in the proposal. We all know that for most of us, writing is very difficult, but it's easier <coughs> if we can, it's actually easier for us to visualize concepts and data, especially if you're an engineer. All right, now let's, let's move to the really, I think, perhaps the foundational innovation, which as I mentioned earlier, sequential thematic organization publications. We all just refer to that as STOP. Now, this is really a very significant change in thinking. James Tracy, David Root, and William Starkey were really, there were three individuals at Hughes Aircraft. And this was in the days when companies had complete departments responsible for writing reports, you know, technical documents. And in this case, it also, they were responsible for doing proposals. Now, Mike Report was an old school, tough program manager who continually pushed these three individuals to think differently about kind of the process they used to write these documents. They produced thousands of proposals using this technique with considerable success. There are actually some similarities of Disney storyboarding, and in fact, given Howard Hughes' interest in the movies, many people believe that Tracy got his ideas from Disney. Now, according to them, they actually developed STOP totally independent of Disney storyboarding. STOP introduced a single but groundbreaking idea, the idea of thematic quantization. Thematic quantization. It's a central tenant of the SMA process. They broke the proposal down into what they called modules, typically just several pages long. You might think the SMA modules are two to five pages. And the module structure could, in fact, be actually different than the outline structure of a proposal. Remember that the outline for traditional writing assignments is topically or subject-based. A module is a little bit different. It's thematically coherent, a single theme. So a module could comprise of several sections of an outline. In STOP, a module is typically a two-page spread, one of the pages being the art and the other the text. Now, similar to what we used to call show-and-tell briefings, if you might remember those, back in the day, where the left slide was the text explaining the briefing slide on the right. Now, I hope that you recall that storyboarding at Disney oftentimes took place before a script was written. The storyboards were a frame-by-frame -frame depiction of the visual image, plus very concise text annotations, which were often done after the image. The fact that they were concise was incredibly important, because it had to be about the single most important thing for that frame. It had to explain why that frame was in the movie. The approach was, and is, as it is used today, intensely collaborative, as is the SMA approach. A hallmark of most Disney films is a strong theme as in the SMA approach. Clearly, our SMA process had its roots in stop and go in Disney storyboarding. As Jim Brevich said, we all hitchhike along the road to learning. Well, that was part two of best practices, which I like to call good practices. It is, and you know, I love the fact that it you know, demonstrates how everybody was standing on the shoulders of giants, right? That's you know, true. The progression of things moving forward. Yeah. Yep, and we well, continue to evolve our art as well. We do, yeah, yeah we've definitely, yeah. we definitely do in yeah. those. Uh, we've, we've got some new thinking on value proposition coming out. That's right, right? that's right. And, and other things we, we won't true. talk about today. Yep. So I hope that, they, that these two prior presentations kind of help you understand kind of the origins of kind of essentially there's two ways of doing proposals today in terms of um, how most companies think of it. One is the shipping approach, the other is the SMA approach, and uh, both are widely used. Uh, we believe our approach is obviously superior, <laughs> particularly for a highly technical and engineering based proposals, and, and particularly when a, a proposal is page count limited. That's, that's the key constraint, and, and multi-authors, right? Yeah, I agree yeah. with that, AJ. I think, you know, one of the biggest challenges you have is constraining mm -hmm. page count. And although, yeah. you know, the both practices have, have, you know, got, you know, histories of uh, of success, I think that, you know, what we have, uh, you know, allows you right. to design uh, the, the well, quality into the process. Well, we wrote our, our four books using the SMA process. We and did, we got indeed. it done in six months. Less than Less six than months. Less than six months. Actually, that's right. Yeah.